How do people actually test Swift features before they're even in beta? And how do they even write about these features if they haven't been able to test them? Do they build Swift from source when new features are added to Swift? Or do they have some secret pathway to be able to actually run experimental things in Xcode? Do they even use Xcode? These are all questions that I definitely had when Swift just went open source and people started commenting on, on new features in Swift and actually saying how they worked and how they liked or didn't like certain things. And I was just completely mind blown about that because how do you do that? How do you get something that's not even an Xcode beta yet into your project? For example, the other day I was browsing the, the Swift evolution proposals and I saw this proposal on region-based evolution. And the cool thing is that Apple actually tells you how to use these new and unreleased features right inside of the proposals, right? This one actually tells us that there is an experimental feature flag that you can enable if you have a Swift version that is not yet released, installed on your machine. So luckily I, I know how to do this by now. And in this video today, I would like to show you how you can also start using experimental Swift features and experimental Swift versions inside of your projects. So let's go on ahead and dig into a little demo here where I show you where you can get experimental Swift versions and all of this from so that you too can look at proposals like this one and get to work with testing them. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a simple app. Uh, I call the Experimental Tool Chains app, and it's just a normal Xcode project. Right? So I just made this on my local machine. Nothing special here, nothing secret or nothing that you couldn't do today yourself. But so here's the cool thing when you want to start using experimental features. Right? So to be specific, the feature that I'm going to be testing is this one, region-based isolation. And it's telling us that this one is on main, so we can get the main Swift version and it's gated behind an experimental feature flag, just like you just saw, so that's great. So if you go to swift.org slash download, you can actually find versions of Swift that you can download, right? So you can find Swift 5.10, which is the actual release Swift version right now that already ships with Xcode 15.3, right? So you can also see that Xcode 15.3 has a download link here so that you can download Swift uh, Xcode 15.3 and 5.10 at the same time. Now, if you scroll down, you can see that there's a snapshot section, right? And these are different snapshots for Swift that you could use in your projects. One is called trunk development main. So that gets us whatever Swift version is currently on the main branch. And if we scroll down further, you can get the Swift 6 development branch if you want to see what Swift 6 is going to be like. This one will be slightly behind main, right? So the way the Swift team works is they'll have the main branch, they'll merge that into the release branch and then the release branch eventually becomes what you get with Xcode. Swift 6 most likely will get into the Xcode, what is it, 16 beta that Apple will drop in uh, June with WWDC. So the, the branch that we were interested in was main. So we're going to download the universal architecture Swift tool chain, right? So we click that and this will be downloaded now. So we have to wait for a little bit. It's pretty large, it's 1.3 gigabytes. Uh, luckily we have fast internet here, so we won't have to wait for very long. And we can see that this is a tool chain that was created on April 23rd. So that's just two days ago at the time of recording this video. These uh, tool chains update regularly, right? So that's very nice. So while we wait for the remaining 30 seconds and you're gonna see a little time skip here. Okay, so that's a time skip done. The tool chain has just finished downloading and we're gonna open that file right now. And this gets us a nice little installer. We can just click continue. We can install it for all users of the computer, whatever we want, whatever you think is good. We're gonna put in the password for the computer and we will now be installing the tool chain, right? And we'll see another little time skip because I don't wanna keep you waiting. All right, so now we have installed this new tool chain. So we now have an experimental Swift version installed on our computer that we can start using in Xcode. Uh, we'll move the installer to the trash. We don't need it anymore. So if I go to Xcode right now, I can see that if I open the tool chains, there's a new tool chain available immediately. I didn't even, I didn't even have to restart Xcode. 
And so what's pretty cool is I can just click this and just like that, we are now using an experimental tool chain. Right, so we could actually start using Swift uh, six versions or ver Swift versions, uh, Swift features that are on main without doing anything special. So that's pretty neat. All right, and if we click that little tool chain icon here, we can see which tool chain we're using. I currently only have this new one installed. They're pretty big, so I tend to clean them up when I don't need them anymore. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, but we're not yet using this new region-based isolation feature yet. All right, so we're still seeing an error that is expected uh, for what we're doing, passing argument of non-sendable type client. If you don't know what that is, check out my Swift Concurrency video course. Yeah, I'll link to that down below. It will teach you everything you need to know about sendability and, and all these things. So what we want to do is, is introduce region-based isolation into our project because supposedly uh, that feature allows us to write this code without any problems. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go back to Firefox and go here. And we'll see that we needed to add this feature flag. And so the way you pass a feature flag to your um, Xcode build settings is to go over here into build settings and find other Swift flags. So here you can go into your project, double click that, click the plus icon here and paste. Now pasting like this is not going to work. You're going to need to pass it as two separate arguments. If you do it in a single line, Xcode will complain and not understand what it is that you're trying to do. And at this point, we can actually build the project and we can see that the warning is still there. So why is that the case? Well, unfortunately, Xcode sometimes doesn't pick up um, our new stuff right away. So we could try and clean our build folder. That sometimes works. And if the warning persists after that, I tend to just close Xcode and then relaunch it. All right, so let me just go ahead and do that. So I have just relaunched Xcode and we're going to build the project again to see if everything works this time around. So we're building right now. You can see that we still have our stuff here. We went to the content view. The warning is gone now. All right. So sometimes switching tool chains and adding feature flags, Xcode just kind of caches stuff, I guess. So it doesn't always pick things up immediately. But now we can see that this actually solves the warning for us. So let's say that you're trying to get ready for Swift 6 at the moment, and it's just taking you forever to do that. That's totally reasonable. And sometimes Apple will add new features to Swift that will allow you to make the transition a little bit easier. So using experimental tool chains, it's going to be very convenient with that. So that is a little demo of how you can grab an experimental tool chain from Swift.org, install it, use it in Xcode, which will allow you to get new Swift versions into your projects. Keep in mind though, that these tool chains have not gone through rigorous testing. They're not intended to be used by the general public. So if you're using them, make sure that you kind of expect things to break sometimes. And if they do, go to the Swift forums and post about it because Apple is actually interested in people testing these tool chains and telling them what they're running into so that they can make sure that once they actually cut a new release of Swift, that all these problems are fixed. I really like doing uh, tests of new features when it looks like they could actually solve compiler errors or warnings related to concurrency these days because uh, there's still a lot happening in the preparation of Swift 6. Um, that sometimes means that we are trying to jump through hoops to solve warnings or errors at the moment when Apple is actually going to fix those in Swift itself. So that's how you do this. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that so you can get more videos like this one. The button's down below. You know where to find it. Like the video. Do all the things that the algorithm likes. I hate saying it, but I still do. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.